Hey you guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness. I am so delighted you're here with me today. Today I am going to be talking to you about a message that I have been receiving from the universe, which is to start looking at things from a different perspective. It is so easy for us when we get busy in our lives to go on autopilot and start thinking about all of the ways in which our life sucks. And when we start to do that, the universe will show us all of the ways in which our life sucks, right? We'll start to see proof of that. But I challenge you today to look at life from a different perspective. We have a new moon coming up. And the new moon energy, of course, is always about manifesting. It's about letting go of things that no longer serve us. And most of all, I really believe that that is our mindset. So many of us have gotten so comfortable in going with the flow of life, but not in the way that we're allowing the universe to bring us new opportunities, but rather We have one negative thought and then we let that spiral into another, into another, into another. And then suddenly we're down this rabbit hole of negativity and it's so hard to break free from that. And I get it because many of you might be experiencing illness. There is a sickness going around and believe me, I had it. I got sick on the Tuesday right before Thanksgiving break and I haven't been this sick in a while not even when I had COVID. And I don't know what this was, but I can tell you that it knocked me for a loop for a couple of days. And I'm not used to that. I'm not used to having to stop, pause, take a break. And I don't like it. I don't like being down. But I was sick. And then I've had some other things going on. And in the midst of all of the chaos and everything that could have caused me to go into this negative downward spiral, what I realized was that there are a lot of things going on that are actually blessings that I'm not seeing and that I'm being challenged to look at things from a different perspective, to look at things as though it's not a curse Bad things don't always happen to me, but that there are blessings all around me. And if I would just open my eyes and see it, then things will get a lot easier for me. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. How do you do that? How do you look at all the chaos around you and say, okay, these are not bad things happening to you. These are things happening for you that if you would just realize, actually, these are answered prayers. And I know you're going to sit there and listen to me and think, what the heck are you talking about? Why would I have asked for these things? I don't want these as answer prayers. But if you will listen to me as I explain what has happened to me this week, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. So first of all, when our energy is low and when we're sick, and let me tell you, holidays seem to be the time. I don't know why. Maybe because there are a lot of stressful things going on anyway. But I think that every one of us can relate to being sick around the holiday times at one time in our life or another. And it's the worst, right? You keep thinking to yourself, this is supposed to be a joyful time. I have all of these things to do. I can't be sick. But it happens. And I think one of the reasons that happens when we are near the holiday season is Because we're stressed. We're trying to make everything wonderful and we want to have the most perfect holiday season. And I saw something the other day on social media that I thought was great. Because I think this might help many of you. It said something to the effect of, you don't have to be in matching pajamas for your Christmas picture or have your whole house decorated for it to be a good Christmas or for you to be a good mom. And it's so true. We're always trying to live up to everyone else's standards of what should be a good Christmas. And I had to laugh because my daughter was not able to come home for Thanksgiving. And she was a little worried about Christmas. And we still don't know, definitely, if she's coming home for Christmas. But I've told her she has to. I told her, you quit your job because it's not worth it. And we will deal with it. And I had to laugh because my nephew, who is very stoic, 
but has always been close to my daughter, said, if you come home for Christmas, we'll wear matching pajamas because that has been her thing since she was probably in junior high. She has been trying to get us to wear matching pajamas for Christmas, and the kids did it a couple of years in a row, but she's trying to spread this throughout the adults and everyone. You come to Christmas Eve dressed in matching pajamas, and it'll be so fun, and her spirit is infectious. And my nephew said, if you come home for Christmas, we promise we'll all wear matching pajamas. We thought that was hilarious. But he was so sincere about that. He just wants her to be home for Christmas, and as we all do. But I thought about that. So many people worry around the holidays about things that are very superficial and don't mean anything. And let me tell you, my first holiday of hosting Throughout the years growing up, we had holidays at different family members' house. At first, my grandma Lassen hosted it, and my Aunt G on my dad's side, so my grandma Lassen was my mom's side, my Aunt G was my dad's side. We would split the holiday. We would go part-time here, part-time there, and then when we got to a certain age where my grandma wasn't able to host it, my mom hosted it at our house. When I was in college, like my first few years of college, maybe my last few years of high school, we had it at our house and it would rotate. And so it became the age a few years ago where no one stepped up. And so I said, okay, I'm going to have it at my house. My house is not huge. It's nice, but it's not huge. But I said, I'm going to have Christmas here. And I remember that first year I was so worried about every little thing that I was going to have, right? I'm going to have ice cream punch for the kids. I'm going to have wine for the adults. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. And I was so worried about everyone else having a wonderful time that I didn't have a good time. I didn't enjoy myself. I was so obsessed with everyone else and everything that I didn't really enjoy it. I was not fully present. And I'll admit that. And I realized that at the end, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I was just running around the whole night. And the next year I thought, no, you know, I'm going to plan this and I'm going to let it go. And it's going to be what it is. And I'm not going to worry. And in the moment, I'm going to be present and I'm going to be there. And it was amazing and it was wonderful. And I enjoyed myself so much. And that is the way to be. But there are so many people who run around and they worry about every little thing and you have to be perfect and we all have to have the matching pajamas and we have to get the perfect picture that you don't remember what happened because you're not fully present. And what I think is most important at this time is just to be fully present and enjoy the company you have and to be really there. And a few other things that have happened to me over the past couple of weeks that have just given me epiphany moments, aha moments, whatever you want to call them, that I wanted to share with you because I feel like we're all guilty of this. We all pray and we want our angels to help us and we're so focused on having the best life and hoping that we get what we want and then we start living our lives and things happen and then we're like, oh my gosh, why did that happen? That was terrible this happened and that happened and we start doing the whole victim thing, right? Well, was me. Why did that happen? Why did this happen? So I had a moment over the holiday where I realized all of the blessings that I truly have. Even though I could have chosen to see the negative and looked at it that way, I realized something. I realized that we have a choice in everything. And since I had this aha moment. I've been seeing things all over social media to remind me of that. And that's why I wanted to talk about this today. But I got sick on Tuesday before Thanksgiving break. And I've I've been relatively healthy for a long time. But and it's it's very ironic because I think either on Friday or Monday I got an email from our HR person saying Way to go. Thank you for not taking any sick days. We're so thankful for you and everyone's so thankful for you, right? So I get that. And then the Tuesday, we had to go Monday and Tuesday before the Thanksgiving break. Tuesday, I woke up. I went to bed Monday night feeling a little eh, and I thought it's probably just the changing temperature because we went from 
60 to 30 and it was very cold and I thought it's probably just my allergies. I woke up Tuesday morning feeling worse and as the day went on feeling worse like getting chills and just not feeling well and I thought oh great you know here it is Thanksgiving and I'm sick and yes that is what happened. I was sick through Thanksgiving break. Now I was still able to go to Thanksgiving because I was past the days of being contagious, but I didn't feel my best. I tried to still participate and be, you know, friendly and whatever. I wasn't feeling the best, but I wasn't going to let that keep me down either. And I knew during the break I needed to rest some and there were a lot of things I wanted to get done and I needed to be focused. I needed to decorate my house. I needed to switch everything over, but I wasn't feeling well and I wasn't feeling my best. And then on top of that, my daughter didn't get to come home for Thanksgiving. So at first I was feeling a little down. It was the second Thanksgiving without my mom and of course we can tend to focus on those who aren't with us. So I didn't have my mom. I didn't have my daughter. And I could have let that affect me and say, hey, I'm going to have a horrible holiday. But I didn't. My sister-in-law invited me to go with her to her family's at lunch. And the normal people we gathered with, we usually got together at lunch. But this time it was dinner. We all still got together. I got to be with my son and with my brother and my sister. And we all got together, had fun. It was still an amazing day, even though I wasn't feeling my best. It was still fun and it was still memorable and I would still do it all over again. But then after the break, the next day I'm talking to my daughter. She texts me and says, mom, I had a car accident. And of course, as a mom, immediately your heart sinks. But she said, I'm fine. And I knew she's calling me. She's fine. And the person she ran into was fine. The the damage was minor, minimal. It was ice. You know, she's in Colorado and they had some ice and she was beating herself up like, oh, I can't believe I did this. And I said to her, listen, you can be the best driver in the world. And if you hit a patch of ice and you don't know how to navigate that, there's nothing you can do. You lose all control. I said, don't even blame yourself or worry. It's an accident. That's why they call it that. And we are fully insured and everything's going to be fine. The car is fixable. You're not replaceable and you're fine. And that's the main thing. And we went on and we're like, yeah, yeah, that's good. And the next day (laughs) I decided I was going to go get myself a massage because I wanted to do self-care because I'm always talking to you guys about self-care and how we need to take care of ourselves. So I did that. And I got home, and it was a Saturday, and it's 11.57, my bank closes at noon, and I get a text that says, hey, we have a suspicious charge here of 90 cents on your debit card, did you charge this? And I said, I didn't recognize the charge, so I said no, and I said, okay, we're shutting down your debit card. I'm like, what? Wait, it's Saturday at noon The bank closes at noon. Like, I need to be able to use my debit card for the rest of the weekend. And luckily, even though the bank part closed, the online, the phone people who were there to talk to you were still open. And she talked to me and we discussed it. And I said, hey, I, I can't just not go without a debit card. I can't. I need a debit card. This is how my life is, right? I'm I'm dependent on it. I'm relying on it. And she said, okay, well, you stay on the line with me and you go to an ATM and I'll, I'll lock it. And when you get to the ATM, I'll open it. And then you get your money out that you need for the weekend. And then I'll lock it again. And she said, I really just don't want you to have someone come and drain your account. She was so super nice and sweet. And caring, you know, and I knew she was really concerned about it. And I said, okay, that's fine. So that's what we did, which was so nice that she stayed on the line with me. And I could have gone to this place of like, oh my gosh, this is such a hassle and this and that. And But I had this huge epiphany, two things. Number one, my daughter's accident could have been so much worse. 
she wasn't injured at all. The other person was not injured at all. And do you know what I pray every night before I go to bed? I pray thank you to Archangel Michael and all of the other archangels for protecting my children as they're driving, as they're going to school, as they're doing all of the things. And I realized this was an answered prayer. She was not hurt. The damage was minimal. She was able to get a rental car. She was able to fix everything. Like this was a blessing, not a curse, not, you know, it's easy for people to go to that and say, oh my gosh, this was horrible. No, she's okay. That's the most amazing thing ever. The next thing, this having to get a new debit card, they caught a 90 cent charge that could have been a charge that would have drained my entire bank account, but they caught it. And even though it was a pain that now I had to go get a credit card, a new debit card, which I already did and have fixed and it's no big deal, it's no big deal, right? The things we make into big deals sometimes I think are actually our answered prayers. And we want to say, oh my gosh, why did you do that to me? When instead we should be thanking the universe because the universe protected my daughter or because they protected me from my bank account being drained completely. Like we need to understand that there are so many blessings in our lives that we often take for granted. So when you feel like a lot of things are piling on, look for the blessings in it because I promise you, I promise you that it is there. We have so many amazing and wonderful blessings every day, but I feel like we don't see it because we feel like it's the universe piling on when if we really, really, truly looked at it, we would see it's the universe protecting us. You know, like when you lose that job or that relationship or something just doesn't go your way, that is the universe answering your prayers. And I never used to feel that way. I would be like, why are you doing this to me? And throw my hands up and, or throw a fit in complete despair of why did you test me universe? Why are you doing this to me? Why did you ruin my life? Right? We say that. Why did you ruin my life? When in fact... A lot of these things are blessings in disguise that if we really truly looked at it, we would say, you protected me from so much. And it doesn't seem that way at the time. Believe me, I've had relationships totally fall apart. And at the time, I'm like, why are you punishing me? This is the worst thing that ever happened. I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. I'm so this. I'm so that. I miss this person. And years down the road is when I realized you protected me. That person was a nightmare and they did way worse to the next person than they did to me and you protected me and I couldn't see it because I don't have the eyes that the universe has. I'm not able to see the bigger picture and a lot of the things that happen to us, if we really truly took a different perspective, if we looked at it from a different way, we would see that we're protected so many times from so many things that we don't even see coming. So I'm challenging you today to look at your life. And if you feel like you've had a lot of things pile on lately, I don't think it's a piling on. I think it's the universe answering your prayers and protecting you and you not realizing what's happening. So really take a look at what's been happening to you lately. And if you felt like it's been a lot, I'm here to tell you the universe is aligning your steps to get you ready for what's about to come because there's about to be a major breakthrough for you. And I know if you've been seeing social media, a lot of people are saying like, oh yeah, it's your big year. But I really truly believe that there are big breakthroughs coming for a lot of people and it's requiring you to let go of a lot of stuff that isn't serving you. And the universe is doing that in a lot of ways and we need to start paying attention. Now, I wanted to pull some cards for you just to give you a little bit of wisdom and guidance for the upcoming week. And I chose to use a deck that was gifted to me by someone who is a patron. Now, this deck is by Angela Rose. She is a self-love coach and meditation instructor. And Ginger is the person who gifted me this deck. And I'm so appreciative. 
And she's one I can always count on to ask me how I'm doing. I just appreciate her so much. So the first card that came out is, what excuse am I making? There are always going to be distractions, worry, and fears that we will face when wanting something different in our life. It can feel scary living in the unknown and not knowing exactly how life will unfold when we leap into something new. Trust that you will be fully supported and do it afraid. I love that. And that's been my motto my whole life. If I'm scared to do something, I know I have to do it. Do it afraid. Take one small action step today. Build momentum and confidence. Trust in yourself because you can do this. The mantra that goes with this card is, I can do hard things. The next card coming out is you are your own inspiration, which I love because you are. You have all of the answers within you. We can forget in our own power and look outside of ourselves for validation and inspiration. We forget that we ourselves are inspiring. You don't need another class, certificate, or other validation. Be your own inspiration today. I love that. So many of us... We have this imposter syndrome and we think we're not enough. You're enough. You know what you need. You have exactly what you need. We came here with this blueprint where you said, I'm going to come here to experience X, Y, Z. I'm going to learn X, Y, Z. And then we somehow get this feeling. We're told, whether through us or other people, that we're not enough. You are enough. You have it. You know it. Lean on your own inspiration. Journal one thing you are proud of yourself for. And then there's the mantra that goes with this card. I am amazing. I inspire me. I am wise. I am knowing. I love that. You are. You have all of it. You have everything you need. You came here with everything you need. You need to trust in yourself. And the last card that came out is be unapologetically yourself. It is so normal to feel distracted by what everyone else is doing or becoming. You don't need to compare yourself to anyone. You are unique, magnetic, and luminous in your own way. You were not made to be like everyone else. Stop trying to copy everyone else. Stop trying to live up to everyone else's expectation. Own who you are. Put your blinders on and stay in your own lane. Stop watching to see what everyone else is doing. And just do yourself. Be yourself. Today is your day. How can you show up and own your day? How are you focused on yourself? Are you trying to focus on what everyone else is doing or are you doing your own thing? Anyone who forged their way through history made their own way. They walked their own path. And why? Because if you do what everyone else already does, you're never going to discover anything new. Be you. Be unapologetic. Be who you were meant to be and be fearless. Today is your day. And the mantra that goes with this card is, I stand confidently in my power. My time is now. Stop trying to imitate everyone else. How are you showing up authentically in your truth and in your power? And what can you do That makes you different and stands out. And yeah, it's uncomfortable sometimes to be different. But I think you know that because if you're listening to my podcast, you're probably going through a spiritual awakening or we're the black sheep and you never fit in anyway. So why are you worried about what other people think of you? Be unapologetically you. Be true to yourself. You are the only one that matters. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful and that it resonated with you. I am sending you so much love and light. If you want to join us on Patreon, 
You can get episodes like this each week. I do an episode each week for my Patreon fans, and it is not one that goes to the public. We also do a live card reading each week, and it's a wonderful community where everyone gets along. I would love to have you there. If you click on the link in the show notes, you can join us for free for a seven-day trial. You can see what it's all about. You have access to all of the content that is already there. Plus, you could join us for a live each week. And if you like it, you can stick around. If not, no big deal. There are no obligations to stay. If you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a review from wherever you're listening. I really, truly appreciate that. I would also like to invite you, if you like this podcast, to join the Breathe, Love, and Magic podcast by Ronnie Ann Ryan. I was fortunate enough to be one of her guests, and she is a beautiful and lovely soul, and her podcast is amazing. The link is in the show notes if you would love to go and check it out and to listen. She is such a wonderful and beautiful soul who has amazing guests, guests like me. So Breathe, Love, and Magic, that podcast, please go and check that out and give Ronnie Ann Ryan some of your love. And if you like my podcast, please leave a positive review or share it with anyone you know. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. I'm sending you so much love and light. I hope you have a beautiful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.